Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So the reason I wanted to dedicate a subject to this piece of hardware is very simple. In the last couple of months, I've reviewed a lot of these plug and play devices. Think about Android boxes, but also mini PCs. And I think the number one complaint was the price. And I can't blame you guys because it's a lot of money when you're paying like 500 euros or $550 for a tiny mean machine. But for the same amount of money, you can basically also buy an MZ Trident second hand. And maybe if you're lucky, you can even buy it brand new in box. I am using this one for, I think, two years now. And this device itself has some pros and cons that we're going to talk about today. But the reason I picked it up and I wanted to slap some Botashira Linux on it, because I think this machine can be like the next level when it comes to emulation and especially the high end stuff. Because these things are not expensive to buy and they have a lot of potential when it comes to the CPU but also the GPU. Take consideration the MSI Trident number 3 is already an older model. It's not already, I think I bought it second hand for the same amount of money and they are getting cheaper and cheaper nowadays. Even with the GPU, CPU market is exploding. But when you're looking at the specifications, I think there is where we're going to get a lot of interesting things. So I need to point out there are a couple of different versions out there. We're having like this black edition, also having like the ice width white edition. But especially when you're looking at the specifications, there we're going to get a big difference. This is the i7 model in 6th generation. You also have it in the 7th generation. This one comes with a 1060 GTX, but I also have a 1050 GTX. So when it comes to the MSC Trident, they are used for sale here in my country. There are a lot of them selling them off. On eBay you can find them very often. But take consideration that there are a lot of different versions out there, not only with the color case, but also when it comes with the internal specifications. But in this video, we're going to do it with these specs. The i7 with the GTX 1060. So what we're going to get at the back, are going to get a display output, an HDMI and the option for a DVI monitor. Over here, we're not going to use this VR link simply because we're going to use the NVIDIA video card. Then we're going to get the input for the power supply because it's an external one, like an up top HDMI out that we're not going to use over here. Then we're having four USB ports. If you want to have four minutes to play with four different controllers, it's possible. Then we're having like audio out because this thing has even a support for surround. And we're going to get your RG45 Ethernet connection. And then we're having like a very fast port that we're going to use today. So at the front, the only thing that I'm going to use is the headphone jack for the audio today. And of course, we're going to get two extra USB ports, the faster ones. And it's very convenient if you want to use like an external hard drive that I'm going to use today. So this is not a tutorial how to install Bodocera. If you want to, I can make a separate video about that, how you need to set it all up. But in this video, we are not going to use the eternal hard drive. I'm just going to leave the system as is because we can also use it like dual boot. So we can play some Windows Steam games, but also when you're slapping this hard drive through the external USD 3.0, we can play some retro games with Bodocera Linux. So let's do that. Let's connect the bad boy and we'll show you what I mean. All right, so the system has been booted up. The hard drive has been attached to the fastest USB port. That is very important. Otherwise, we're not going to get any good performance whatsoever. The only thing that you need to do is set your hard drive to primary disk. So when I'm powering on the system, it will straight boot into Bodocera Linux and we're going to have a lot of gaming fun. So I've done it already, what you can see there over here, depending what kind of system you're having, the BIOS will be slightly different, but the idea behind it is exactly the same. And if the disk has been configured correctly, you're going to get the intro loading screen. And then of course, we're going to get the selection menu for the games itself. So next up, let's talk about the controllers and what you can use with this bad boy. Okay guys, so next up we need to choose a controller because I wanted to use of course a controller with the retro games. So you can use yourself an Xbox 360 controller, I really love it. So the Bodocera has been a su great support when it comes to a lot of different controllers. And if you want to get a cheap one, that is my favorite number one at the moment. If you pick it up, they are like really cheap to get and they are very comfortable with a very nice D-pad. Especially the D-pad for me very important because I'm a big fighting fan. So, and it has a turbo function, so that is just a big positive thing for the shoot em up games. But what I like about this way you can boot up your external hard drive or you can build it inside of course is that you can just use dual boot so we can play a lot of games through Windows but also use Bodocera Linux and then combined with the i7 or i5 and the GTX 1060 that is inside this machine we have a lot of potential when it comes to the high-end stuff high-end stuff runs pretty good on the mini PCs I've reviewed before but most of them coming with an HD 600 Intel GPU and it is a powerful chip, 
but of course not as powerful like an 1060. Okay, so first up, Atomos Wave. This is a system that doesn't run on the cheap boxes that I've reviewed here on the channel before. It's mostly running on high-end devices. And then there's some stuttering here and there, but I think that it's more like an emulation issue than a problem with the hardware itself. So when it comes to PlayStation 1, this can be run on a lot of cheap devices nowadays, so you don't need a beefy PC for this, but it's a fun extra. Crash, crash, crash. Why must you? Ah, yeah, because I'm Crash Bandicoot. Go away! I would not be surprised that this device runs on the native resolution of the system. And with a powerful GPU and CPU combination that we're having here, we can even crank it up. Especially because we're having now an i7 inside this machine. Okay, so where a lot of these Android devices that I've reviewed here on the channel have issues with PlayStation Portable, with a beefy PC like this, you don't have any limitations whatsoever. What I really like about it. Ray to the rainbow. So next up, let's play GameCube games. And also with this we're going to have a lot of great potential when it comes to these games. Because I have found no TV box like an Nvidia Shield that could run these games good enough to enjoy. Alright, next up, let's play a PlayStation 2 game. I just want to test it out, like with the GameCube games. These cannot be emulated on a cheap Android box, and not even on Nvidia Shield. I found these systems running at all, or they're not running good enough to enjoy. And with the PC, so that's the reason I will grab myself the MZ Trident that I've been laying around for a very long time. And in the future, they will get it cheaper and cheaper because the technology is going to be improving. 
So even for an older system, this MG Trident has the potential to play a lot of games up to PlayStation 2 without a problem. But okay guys, so I hope you really enjoyed this video. This is more like a piece of inspiration for you guys, just to see what you can do with an old PC. What I do like about these MSD Trident machines is that we can use them also for Steam. So boot up in Windows and just play some awesome games. Let me know in the comments what is your favorite system to play. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of the Wicked family. And I will see you in the next video.